What's up guys, it's Tech Dan here. Thanks for watching. If you like what you're about to see, don't forget to click the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you don't like what you see, if you think it's crap, useless or whatever, not interested. Anyway, I ain't got time to waste. Cup of tea, and then let's get on with it, shall we? Let's do it. Studio Dan is down the studio recording the band. Hi oh, Dan. See you later, you'll see that on the channel later on. But for now, I'm gonna be doing a tech tutorial on a Raspberry Pi installing a retro pie. Yes, now if you don't know what that is, basically if you was born in the 80s, raised in the 90s and you loved all the old computer games like Mario and Sony, Lemmings and all that sort of good old fashion computer gaming retro joystick stuff, well I'm going to show you how to download it for free and install it on a bit of hardware that cost you about 30, 35 quid or 45, 50 dollars if you're in America. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to show you all the ins and outs of this dead easy. I'm going to show you how. Right now, so grab a cup of tea. Let's get on with it. Okay guys, so this is RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi. Now you can download RetroPie from the website, uh, which I'm gonna go through in a second. Uh, but first of all, you can either install it on a Raspberry Pi 1 or 2, which is they're pretty retro now and they're not pretty good because of the memory and the uh, the RAM and stuff. So the standard one to really do this for is a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus or Raspberry Pi 3B. There is a version for Raspberry Pi 4, but I'm going to show you uh, the most common one on Raspberry Pi 3. Okay, so first of all, open up a web browser. Now I've got uh, Safari open here. You can use Firefox, uh, Internet Explorer or Edge if you're on Windows. Um, but we're using a MacBook, so we're going to be using Safari now. You need to go to RetroPie website. So if we type in RetroPie.org.uk, there you go, it's come up suggested there. That's so RetroPie.org.uk, and as you can see here, this is RetroPie. And you can see by looking at it, it's proper retro, the old joystick there, good old uh, Atari days and stuff. And oh, look, there's Lemons there, the Amiga, so you can have. It's basically what RetroPie is, it's like a similar for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's also got control block and power box support if you do uh, all the I.O. Uh, composite stuff. Um, what we want is we just want the software. So go to download. Now you can have a pre-made image ready to put on your SD card, okay? So pre-made image basically means you install that on your SD card, it will load it all completely for, and that's what we want to do. We don't want to know faffing about, we don't want no, we don't want no technical proper in-depth one. If you want a proper in-depth tutorial, I'll do another one with how to install Raspbian OS. Now that's um if you want to do that. So if you scroll down here, you've got the Download for Pi 01, a 2 or 3, or Raspberry Pi 4, and it's got the uh, hash codes there. So we want this one here, the Raspberry Pi, so it's got the MD5 hash code there as a verification to make sure it's downloaded correctly. Now, they don't support Berry Boot. Now, Berry Boot was a Raspberry Pi installer that installed all the different, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Raspberry, Berry Boot, sorry, again, was um, an installer um, that installed like noobs if you had noobs which was the new operating system for Raspberry installing Raspberry now if you want to install it on top of an OS if you've got Raspberry or Debian or Ubuntu or whatever you can go through and it's got all the installation stuff here but we just want a pre-made image that we're gonna copy straight onto our SD card now I'd recommend a minimum of 8 gig uh, uh, SD card, micro SD, but if you haven't got an 8 gig one, 16 gig or 32 is better, but minimum of 8, okay, so anything lower than 8 is probably going to slow it down. So first thing we need to do is download, so we're going to download this, Raspberry Pi 2 free, so we click on that, yes I want to allow, so that's going to start downloading now, as you can see here in the download bar, it's quite a large file there, 842 megabytes, and it's an image file there so gonna let that go and I'll uh, speed this up for you and when that's finished we will uh, get back to the tutorial okay guys so that wasn't as painful as I thought it'd be that's uh, completely downloaded now so that's gone uh, down and it's all automatically now because it's on a Mac it's automatically extracted it to an .img file image file so 
we click on show and find out, you can see there that's the image file so it's 2.86 gig so it's gone from an 842 meg zip file into a 2.86 gig file okay so now that's downloaded um, what we need to do now is we need to copy this image file to our SD card okay so I'm going to show you that in just a sec Great, so you've downloaded RetroPie, you now need to take your micro SD card, put it in your adapter, put it into the laptop, and then we're gonna install the image file that we just downloaded from RetroPie onto this. Let's do it. Ah, right, Dan, how's the recording going? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, all right, mate, yeah. Our SD, micro SD card in our adapter, and I'm now gonna plug it into the computer here and we should see it pop up on the screen any minute there you go so that's our new card okay so it's called unnamed or you named unnamed uh, just to get info on that so we've got here's a 32 gig um, card fat 32 ms dos fat 32 now basically what we need to do is, if you've got a used card you can also format it um, now i use a program called sd formatter you could use um, windisk or something if you're using windows but we need to copy the image now so if we look for the image here retro pipe, so we need to copy that image file onto that sd card there okay now if you're using mac like myself here we use a program called Etcher or Balina Etcher, it's called now. Um, you can use Win32 uh, Disk Imager or Raspberry Pi Imager if you're using Windows. If you're using a Linux computer, you can use the DD command in the uh, command line. You can also use Etcher or Raspberry Pi Imager. You can also use for Mac if you've got a Mac like myself, you can use a program called Apple. Pie baker, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can bake pies just like a proper baker. <laughs> um, but for for the example of this tutorial, we're going to be using uh, Etcher. Now, if you haven't got Etcher, you can download it from uh, the website, which is Bellina.io. But if you type in Etcher.io, it will automatically go on to it. Okay, so it's um, download from Mac. It's, it's only a small little file, anyway. Okay, so uh, we'll. Get on with this. So if we open up Etcher, we'll click on Etcher. It should load up our little screen here. There you go. So it's come up here now. So basically, it automatically recognizes your SD card. Um, it's showing it here, 33.6 gig. It's the Apple reader and it's under dev stroke disk free. So obviously make sure to drive selected because you don't want to be formatting or install an image on your main actual hard drive um, but it's pretty it's pretty clever this this program so it should pick it up straight away anyway okay so first we want to select the image click on select image now it automatically goes to downloads uh, so let's just do this. there it is there that was today so we click on that image file click on open and then we just simply click on flash click on flash and boom right it's gonna ask us for a password so password in admin password and it starts and it's starting to flash so brilliant okay so while that's doing that I'll uh, I'll speed this bit up when it's done I'll get back to you see you in a second okay right well that's flashed completed okay so it says it's completely uh, successful there uh, if you want to flash another one, flash another one, it automatically unmounts the drive. So what I'm going to do is just shut this down. As you can see, it's gone. I'm just going to reject. Plug it back in. And there you go. Now it's renamed it to called Boot. And obviously you can see it's got all these files on here now, which is the operating system. Okay, so that is now flashed and ready with RetroPie operating system on the Raspberry Pi SD card. Right, so let's put it into the SD card. So we're going to eject that. That's gone now, I can eject that. And let's go and put it in the Raspberry Pi. Back in a jiffy. 
Okay, so we've just written the retro pie onto this little micro SD card. So now we have, we don't need that. We've now got retro pie, all your childhood dreams on this little card. <laughs> and then where does it go? It goes in the back of the pie here, like so. Boosh, there you go. In there, it sticks in there. It only goes in one way. You don't want to try and force it in the other way. So you don't want to break the card, but I'll just show you it don't go in any other way. Now, as you can see, it's got pins on the bottom of the board there. Pins on there. There you go. All right, so now we're going to power this baby up. And I'm going to show you the other peripherals you need. You're going to need a power cable, an HDMI cable, and a USB keyboard or a controller to set up the gaming as a gaming console. So now, this little baby is your gaming console from the 80s and 90s. Look at that. And it is tiny, size of a credit card. Bam. 35 quid. $40 or whatever it is. I'll put all the links in the description for you, but um, yeah, so watch out for part two coming up, and uh, I'll see you in part two in, with another video part for this. So, shut off an hour.